Hey up everyone, it's the Oxford Panda, welcome back to FDB1, where this, as fans switched off because it's run out of power, is deep. Yeah, because that is a deep pot, I need to try and not run out of experience before I get too deep into the air. So that is working like an absolute charm. And all I've been doing is just switching this on for a little bit. Letting it get a bit of energy, let it fill up. Switch it back off. Does mean that I'm going to end up getting rid of all these geothermal generators and stick another one of these tesseracts in here to power all the machines here. Everything is going along swimmingly. This is filling up with a lot and boy do I mean a lot of 36,000 diamonds in counting <laughs> oh I do like it I do like it a lot uh, but yeah I'll switch you off because I want to make a bigger reactor and get it upgraded as well uh, bees I mean, yeah. Uh, let's get another one of these made. Oh, we need blocks of diamond. Got a couple of stacks of blocks of diamond. <laughs> Activate that one. Nah, I need normal power cables, don't I? Uh, so get rid of those. Uh, make some of those. Bugger off. Part wrench, what is here? And make sure that is actually activated. Which it should be. I don't know what it is with the tesseracts that just seem to send only. Eve only. They just seem to be send only. The great blocks and they do what they do really well. Uh, oh wait, I know why it's the power into it. Send only, aren't you? These annoying little gates. Uh, yeah, no idea. You're set to receive. No, you're set to send. So you need to be set to receive. It's then set to pull. I have no idea why it's just so argumentative because it's working, because that's working a charm. Uh, this isn't working because the game's just being annoying. It's not to do with the speed upgrades. Oh, well. 
back to what we're looking at anyway, which is evil craft. So I have got a little bit ahead on evil craft because I've been just working out what goes where, how things work and all that jazz. So let us um, ignore this. I'll fix that off camera. Don't know why they are so argumentative. I have moved all of my evil craft stuff to here. Put it in a bigger chest just so that we've got plenty of storage. And where we got up to, we'd gone through a few bases, we built a few things and we'd made a blood extractor get blood. I've got some blood there. It is nice and easy. Uh, let's... Oh, creepy there. So what we've got? 3465. 36, nice. Uh, that's pretty much it. Just go around, kill a few things, and you'll get blood. To 500, it fills up, and then you, in my case, fill up the second one. Which, from the looks of it, villagers do add a lot to your <laughs> collection. But yeah, that's just me being cruel and killing them. Good reason to kill all the ducks, though, that I find. So, with this blood, what I am going to need to do is make a bit of space here, because straight from this you can right click and put it down like a bucket, and then right click again to pick up. So they are like portable buckets in that sense. Now, I've been going through the book. I've read through the book. I've picked out a few things that could be very useful, including one thing I do want to do. I do want to have build and have a look at. It is so much fun. Right, this mod is massive. There's a lot of stuff that can be done with it. There's a lot of stuff to do with it. There's some things that sound really cool and a bit out of there. So, yeah, I'm going to need to uh, look into it. But, blood. Now, what you want to do with this is exactly what we've got here. If you put blood out and leave it out long enough, it will dry into a piece of hardened blood. Now, I broke that, so I got a big block of hardened blood. If I were to use a um, what they call them shears, not shears uh, flint flint and steel it will give me the blood shards so you can break it with your fists it'll turn to regular blood again breaking such hardened blood with flint and steel will give you some hardened blood shards so that actually just gave me shards for breaking that instead of a new pool of blood that was Probably not intended. However, getting all that blood in this system, there's quite a lot of mobs you need to kill to fill those up. Probably could do with filling them more up as well. So, we want a vein sword. A vein sword will give you the extra blood when you kill, and you need power gem, dark power gems, some spikes, and a dark stick. A dark stick, we need planks from an undead tree. To get an undead tree, we need to infuse a dead bush with blood. To do that, we need a blood infuser and a blood infusion core, which needs harder blood. Right, so, if we uh, were to take some dark gems and make a dark gem block, And put these here. 
and drop this in. Do drop it in? Or does it have to be, oh, it has to be individual gems, doesn't it? Five pools of blood can create one dark power gem. And we need only one and some more hardened blood. So to get that, we need to get a little bit more of the blood in here. So let's go and get some. So in, um, yeah, getting more experience and more blood, I just went and killed a load of endermen. I managed to find myself another statue. But yes, so we've got more of this stuff. So we're going to do that and then we're going to get the fun and steel. Uh, we'll put all them in there, I didn't mean to. Uh, I saw it then I moved it, there we go. And then you lot need to go into here. Yeah, we just wait for this to dry. And we've got some more dried blood. Oh. So yeah, it doesn't give me any more than what it did before. Oh well. We've got some more of that. So I can take the power gem, wrap it in the hardened blood, get a blood infusion core that and turn it into a blood infuser. So I'll slap there. Now this has got an internal buffer so you can right click and all the blood in there. Now this condensed blood can also be thrown in. So I can not do that, put the rest of it in there. Do that and we've got Plenty of blood in here, plenty left over. I've just got to go fill those two back up, but I'll do with that quickly there. Get some of this stuff. So, we do need this for a few more items, uh, specifically this one and another one of these infusion cores. But I need five buckets of blood to make another infusion core. Or, now that we've got this, I can just put the dark gem in here. And at a cost of, it doesn't tell you here, oh, 250, blo uh, 250 millibuckets. So we can afford to make a few more of them. Or we can do it by the block as well which is 225 millibuckets, equivalent to nine of those. So I'm going to fill this hole back in, or well, most of it anyway. Keep a couple of spaces so I can get some more of these as well. There are a few more ways to get it. We can get it from the undead leaves, which comes from an undead tree, which we're going to make next. So I need some shears, which I've got here, and I need a sapling. So shears and a sapling will give you a dead bush. And then once this is finished, and that is... That, out that block. Right, so I put the debush in there. That block is just nine of those. And the dead bush will produce an undead sapling, which we need to grow into an undead tree. Now, I wonder if bone meal will work on this. Yes, it does. Uh, so get my axe, uh, which is there, and we've got some undead saplings, and we've got some blood stains. Now these 
should be the ones if we try and break it with a flint and steel. Nope. There is a way of gaining, from, gaining something from the again that congeal blood from the uh, the blood stains, but <laughs> I can't remember. I'll have to look it back in a sec. For now, let me get that. Does that give me another sapling? Nope, it gave me another bush though. So I can always throw that into the air to get another sapling. Now, with the undead logs, considering this is what we're going towards, we can make a dark stick. So, undead logs to planks, gem on the top, that gives you some dark sticks. A couple of spikes, stick, dark power gems, we get the vein sword. Take that out while we're at it. Um, which, if we look at that, we're on 2000. If we kill a duck with the sword, there it is. It gave us 38, which is a bit terrible. Whereas, if we. Uh, at this point, I'm not going to be trying to do it. There we go. If we did a duck in with the right, the vein sword. 89 so the vein sword massively increases the amount of blood you'll get out of killing something so with that being said another problem is it's strong look at that that went up nearly thousand so I could go back to my little place in the end weaken a few end them in with the sword finish them off with the vein and jobs are gone the downside is durability is only 32 which is uh, bad and can this be further enchanted Is a question. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So, multi stasis, power swift, this swift. Sharpness 2, let's have a look. Yes, it can. And we have got mending on this side. I do want to take mending off that, and there will be a way to do that soon. Anything else on here? Uh, unbreaking three probably be good for it. There we go. A little bit more durable. Now that'll help fill these back up, so we can add more to these. Uh, didn't mean to take blood out of that and it just refill automatically with that, so that'll do for you. Um, but with that and with that, we have got the dark tanks, which I have made before iron dark gems. Uh, but we can make a normal tank, 1600 millibucket supply, or a dark tank with a 144,000 millibucket supply. That is a whole lot of yikes. But we could use that to store the blood and then push directly into here. We've got the dark power gems. Now, the thing about this, about Evil Craft, is it's got a couple of things that are rather cool. So if we have to go back to here, it does have this, the blood chest. So we do need another one of those. Now. And it's wrapped in wood. There we go. Blood chest. So I can pop you here. Now this has a uh, space for blood again. So I'm not going to put a lot in. I'm just going to put that much in. And what this does, you put 
items into the blood chest and at the cost of some blood it will repair them and this goes for a lot of things now the problem with the blood chest is it rarely happens but whilst repairing in the chest it can take on a negative effect so you need a way to take out the negative effects that this can put in the way you can do that is with a purifier which needs another one of those and it also needs a dark block there we go Let that repair up uh, the purifier which I'm going to slap here Unless this is all done over here so I'll take it off with that for now let me go get uh, you right. and we need one more item which is a look uh, look which is a book in the infuser with a promise of tenacity so promises uh, we need one of those so we need one of those so we need that right one of that needs some of that and one of those so uh, promises are boosters so where is the promises oh, somewhere. I am not sure where the promises are. Right. Advanced plus infuse. There we go. Using crushed dark gems, you can material construct materialized promises, which the blood infuse actually seems to adhere to. Fill the bowl of empty promises with purple powder infusing it with blood will result in the bowl of promises of a certain strength. Combining this with a reactant and a mineral promise acceptor can be created a significant amount of blood will result in a promise of a certain type. Promise of tenacity can be created by utilising organic reactants. This will allow the machine, and maybe others as well, to allow for more promises and blood to hold. Further, it increases the possible infusion recipes and you get promise of velocity as well. So three dark gems to make the bowl and then crushed gems uh, some gem dust which I don't have but we do have this so let's create the bowl and crushed dark gems we can make with a dark gem in the crusher which is upstairs One and two. So we got the bowl and the two crushed dust to make a bowl promises. And that needs to be slapped in here. So that we could turn it into a bowl of promise to your not. And then we need to make that into a promise of tenacity with a spider eye, right? easy enough, and an iron promise acceptor, which is a block of iron in the infuser. So get a block of iron. Get a spider eye. Let this finish cooking. 
Right, so that is the bold promises tier zero. So let's put the block of iron in here to get the promise. That creates my promise acceptor. Bowler promise, spider eye promise acceptor gives us a promise of tenacity. The machine tier also accepts lower tier upgrades. Tank capacity times two. So if I pop that into this slot here, it will double this capacity from 10,000 to 20,000 millibuckets. And if you were to look at the other promises, so eight times for the tenacity three, productivity increases efficiency by 50%. We've got a two and a one tenacity. Velocity increases speed by double, which is another iron promise accepted but a block of redstone. So it is worth making these. And obviously you can go up to third tier of promises, which gets you the tier three tenacity, two tenacity, basically everything. A tier two one gets you everything as well, because we haven't got anything above tier three yet. A tier one doesn't get you that one, but will get you everything else. And a tier zero will only get you the first one. So it does need a few things happening to it. Probably with a couple of bloody infusers running in tandem to get them all made, but yeah. Oh, we get an empty promise at the end of it as well. So that uh, promise of tenacity can be used for quite a few things, but what we use it for is to make a book. So we need a book, we need the infuser, we need to put a book in it, and we need to put the tenacity in it because the block doesn't use a lot actually but you need to have the tenacity in it for it to actually work if you take that out it won't work uh, oh that actually did more than double and we've got a block and then what we do is we put the sword and the block in the purifier, fill it with some blood. And we've got a sword with no enchantments and a book with a minimum enchantment on there, which I could then go and we'll slap it on here because, well, no, I'm not because I can't. <laughs> but you get the picture. You can slap it on, you know, it's an enchantment, stick it on what you want. But that means. The enchantments have got these, like the Efficiency 4, the uh, Silk Touch, Fortune 3, uh, Fire Protect 3. I can rip off of these items using this. And I can make as many blocks as I want now, because I've already got that promise installed. Yeah. That is an immensely powerful tool to be able to have be able to rip off the enchantments like that now there is one more thing in evil craft i want to do because there are a few more weapons a few more items i mean you've seen all this all the biomes you can extract um weapons all sorts you can do with the um chests which from the looks of it you can make a mob farm or a mob drop farm out of them but i need to look into that a bit deeper before i even think about doing this in a recording because a lot of it will be blubbering away like an idiot so every other recording then uh, but I want a broom and a, a, the brooms are quite fun I could do it probably making a a, a bloody bee as well but we'll look at that in a minute um, so when you look at the brooms in the crafting in the book uh, go away you. Uh, broom, 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 broom. Uh, no. Tools. Brooms. So a broom, not to sweep the floor with, but to fly around with, needs to be made with a rod, a brush, and a cap. Now, while flying, you need to make sure there's enough blood at all times, otherwise it will slow down significantly. You need to make sure it's filled with blood. 
but it also has several modifiers like speed, acceleration, maneuverability, levitation, damage, so you can actually ram mobs. The particles it emits, whether it's can light entities on fire, uh, smash block, smash blocks, bounce enemies away from you, apply wither, apply hunger, kamikaze, so it'll blow up. With the shield, uh, protect from incoming projectiles, toughness, to, uh, less influenceable by external factors during movement, such as collide, collision, efficiency, so chances that no blood needs to be consumed, swimming, can maneuver in liquids, ice, slows down colliding enemies, and sticky enemies stick to you. Higher the modifier, the more entities stick. But you need a good level of toughness. And you can use nether stars to add modifiers, redstone, coal, all these to add these different modifiers. Not only that though, the things that your broom is made from has modifiers. So if you made it out of bone, you get four modifiers that you can add, but you start with 150 speed, 150 maneuverability, and 100 acceleration. Which isn't bad. Prismarine, Blaze, less modifiers, but 250 speed straight away. So all of these eight modifiers if you make a netherrack rod. So all these can you can make the rod out of, including just a bare one that doesn't have anything. And then the brushes have their own modifiers. I mean speed, maneuverability, levitation, uh, speed hundred if you make a wheat brush. New ability for make a skeleton skull brush, uh, speed, steadiness, new ability for gold, hunger, and collision damage for zombie. Uh, add another modifier and efficiency if you use blood. Things. Yeah, all these. And then the caps as well. So, oh, there are the caps. I went past the brushes into the caps. Yeah. So. I'm now going to figure out where I'm going to make the uh, broom out of. Right, let's have some planning and fi figure it out. Undead rod, wool brush, slime cap, which I'm giving decent enough uh, go. So, annoyingly, I can't like separate the individual recipes for the caps and the rods, but they're easy enough. So, rod, cap, and brush like that. There's only two undead planks either side of the rod. That just gave me a wooden one and not a undead one. Well, that was bloody annoying. Oh well, we're great. Uh, Wool brush, so I need some wool. Oh, I know why. Because the undead one's three. I get some efficiency with the undead one. Right, back in a mill. Right, one undead rod. So we're going to go back in there now. So, what we're we looking at. Wool brush. So let's do this this way then, shall we? Because it's been annoying. Uh, wool brush. There we go. And then for the cap, we will go in with slime. Uh, which is. Perfect. Now, these together. I mean, it's not as easy as just doing this, is it? It'd be nice if it was, but oh, it is. So we've now got a a broom that has 150 maneuverability, 120 levitation, 250 speed, 200 acceleration, 30 sturdiness, 150 bouncy. Oh, sorry, 15 bouncy and 10 efficiency but I also have four modifiers left so 
I can do that. And fill it with blood. I'll put them in there. <laughs> I'm flying on a broom. And you just shift to, to dismount. Oh, that is cool. But I've also got the modifiers. So, when we're looking in the book of modifiers, um, acceleration is a good one. So I need coal. And if I coal in a block... Now, is it as easy as just adding them like this? Yes, it is. So we've got a lot of acceleration anyway. So what's, what do we could we really do with efficiency? That was redstone. Wasn't it redstone? What was efficiency? Oh no, speed was redstone. Um, go away, you. Efficiency was dark power gems. Right. Extra efficiency. Oh, it doesn't count as extras either. So the acceleration I added only counts as one. The efficiency I added, regardless of how much I add, only counts as one. That is good. We've now got a better way of getting around. So, like the end, for example, this would be a lot better. And just general exploration. Because I'm not using the experience with my ring. And then shift click to drop that down. That is cool. And then just right click on you. And we're full back up. You can go in there then. Right, that is cool. That is so cool. But that, I dare say, uh, with not the roast potatoes, because the baked potatoes stay with me, and we'll recut, we'll regrow one of these. Yeah. But I dare say, that might be it for now. So, I mean, if we wanted to add more modifiers to the broom, we have got that is seven, that is fourteen, eighteen with the skulls. <laughs> and we've got all them left to. To, to, yeah, using this to create with the skulls is ridiculously overpowered. I am not complaining in the slightest. Um, with that, well, like I said, there's a lot more with evil craft. I mean, you just take one look here. And so there might be a few things that I do come back and take a look at. Um, I know one thing I want to do is a bloody bee spawner. Yeah, just if I, so if I got eight blood orbs and wrapped it around a nomad bee spawn egg, which we create with nomad trees, da -da -da, we can use that to create a bloody bee, which gives you bloody combs, which centrifuge into just straight amount of blood so I could use that to fill a ender tank with blood you know stick the bee down add hive down here end tank full of blood boom and the blood orbs 
just empty orbs, glass round iron, uh, in infuser with a uh, promising tenacity, which we've got, and we are golden. Right. I think that'll do for today. So if you like the episode, hit the like button. If you like to hit subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bell to let you know when new episodes come around. Don't forget, go to the link in the description. Head over to Discord. We can talk about all the games that we're playing, all the packs we're playing. Generally, just have a nice time, silly memes, updates on things like wrestling, uh, live events that I go to, that I'm going to. Uh, although by the time of this episode, I'll have been to that wrestling event and the pictures will be up on the Discord. So make sure you head over there to see what that was like. Also, don't forget uh, twitch.tv for slash Panda so you can come and watch me when I live stream. I'm doing this and I should have you out. Um, so you can catch when I do the live streams. And yeah, all that being said, you guys take it steady, everything is a good one. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.